Okay. I hope y'all can see us now. We're on our phone. Okay, so um, our... There's no one there. Oh. One, two, three, four. We are waiting for a few more folks to join us. So sorry, we had to switch to our phone. For some reason, our computer's not wanting to work today. Hello, Betsy. So sorry. Okay, well, we'll just go ahead. Our um, Old Testament reading is from Joshua. It's chapter 3, verses 14 through chapter 4, verse 7. So Joshua 3, 14, 4 through 7. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarathon while the water flowing down to the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jer Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priest stood, and to carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord, your God, into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us say together the song of Moses, canticle number eight, found on page 85. Page 85, the song of Moses. I, I will, will sing, sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless steep has been overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your, Your right hand, hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established, the Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Romans chapter 12 
verses 1 through 8. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now turning to page 94 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us say together Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed. Page 94. O, o ruler, ruler of the universe, universe Lord God, God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail, fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 1 through 16. Matthew, chapter 26, verses 1 through 16. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they plotted to arrest Jesus in some sly way and kill him, but not during the feast, they said, or, may, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was in Bethany in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste? They asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asks, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty silver coins. From that on, from then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now turn with me if you will, to page 96, the Apostles' Creed, let us proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your people with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Uh, during this time of prayer, we invite your prayer requests. Please send them in and uh, we will pray for them during this time. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, draw far, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with, patience, with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we bless you and we praise you and we thank you for yet another day that you've given us to live. We thank you for your goodness and your love, your sovereignty and your power. We thank you that you hold this world in the palm of your hands. We thank you, Lord, that all of our days are written in your book, that you have known them before we were even born. We thank you that your plans and purposes are being worked out. Lord, we trust you in this hour of great difficulty, and we cry out to you in repentance for our sins and on behalf of ourselves, our church, our world, our nation, we repent, Lord, and we humble ourselves before you. We're experiencing a great humbling, Lord, and we just declare that this humbling will cause people to look up, to look to you for their salvation. When all else fails, Lord, yours is a kingdom that will never end. Yours is an unshakable kingdom. And so, Lord, we, your people, we cry out to you on behalf of others, on those who cannot pray, don't know how to pray, those who don't know to pray. We pray for them. We lift up people everywhere who are struggling, those who are sick, those who are suffering. We pray for all those who are facing eviction, from their apartments or their homes because of lack of work and being able to uh, pay their bills. Lord, we pray for mercy. We pray for your provision. Lord, we pray that you would help us as the body of Christ to meet needs and to reach out to those that we can that are in our world that we can touch and, and touch with prayer, touch with fellowship, touch with practical needs. And thank you for the ministry of Epiphany and all that the church is doing to provide food and care for those who need help. 
We pray for our ministers, for Betsy, for David, for our leaders. They would continue to respond and to give them wisdom in this time. Lord, at this time, we uh, ask you to bless Barbara and Mimi and restore them to health. Father, minister them at this time of their need for uh, physical healing. We thank you that you are their healer. Lord, we thank you for our church, our church family. We thank you for the ways that we can stay connected with one another. We give thanks for all of our um, prayer leaders that lead us in prayer morning, noon, and night. We ask your blessing on their family and encouragement. And we thank you, Lord, for all the prayers that we see answered. We pray for Daryl, that he would be restored to perfect health. We pray for those who don't know Jesus, Lord, at this time, that they will come to know him. And Lord, show us those in our lives who don't know you. And give us those opportunities to have conversations with them. To bring the conversation around to our, our faith in you. To be able to lead them into a relationship with you. Lord, we know you're drawing people everywhere to yourself. That you don't waste anything. And so, Lord, we thank you for uh, the opportunities that you give us each day. We love you. We bless you. We worship you, and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now let us conclude our prayer with the general thanksgiving. We'll find it on page 101 in the prayer book. Almighty, Almighty God, God, Father of all mercies, we, your, your unworthy, unworthy servants, servants, give you humble thanks, thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Again, we thank you for your patience uh, with our technology. And we pray you have a wonderful week. Please do join us every morning at 8 a.m. for morning prayer, noon time at 12.10 for noonday prayers, and 8 p.m. for Compline. Uh, Sunday services are at 7 o'clock in the north parking lot. Bring a chair and your prayer book and uh, a mask. And then we have 11, uh, 10 o'clock online at Facebook Live. And then, of course, every Wednesday morning as well for uh, Holy Eucharist for people 50 and older. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.